Okay, I'm gonna hold on a second here. I'm just gonna cheer on my athlete. I've raced in Japan a couple of times before and it's always like a really great experience. A lot of it's just down to the fans because they're hugely enthusiastic. I've been adorned with gifts, uh, signing autographs. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool being here. Uh, I have a big respect for Japanese culture. It's a race that every single year, whenever you see the photographs that come out of it and the riders' reactions and sort of you know, the stories that come back. It seems like it's a race that has a great deal of passion. When I got up at 6 a.m. to catch the flight uh, yesterday morning, I was, I'd never gotten up so easily. Like, I was pretty excited to come here. The year's been exceptionally good on a performance standpoint. The only thing that's hamstrung us a little bit is um, we've just had a lot of really nasty crashes. But the vibe of the team, the spirit of the team, the way they're executing on the fundamentals uh, is, you know, across the board, really, really high level. This year, we finally feel, you know, stable and grounded. Um, you know, obviously there have been a number of years where the financial struggle has really weighed into the into the spirit of the team and um, since that pressure has been alleviated I think the team feels grounded the people in the team feel grounded and you can focus more on on pure performance less than 24 hours since uh, you announced your retirement how's the reaction been it's been overwhelmingly positive uh, the reaction to <clears throat> to my retirement I wasn't expecting so many of my friends to to reach out so many people to extend their their gratitude to me so that was super cool and it's a privilege to be here racing his last race actually i'm very excited to be here for his last race um, which yeah i mean he's a incredible bike rider but an incredible person i'm excited to that he's finally able to move into the next part of his life. Uh, he seems very happy about it. Basically since I was 17 years old I have been a sponsored athlete and next year I'm not gonna get paid at all so I have no obligations to anybody. I love that. I'm so excited about that. It's uh, gonna be sad to see Taylor leave the team. He brings a really nice spirit to the team. Uh, he's such a unique character. Uh, brings a cool vibe to the team. He's a cool dude. This weekend is about is about Woodsy. I think he has a really good chance of winning the race. Woodsy's very motivated. Woodsy's always motivated. Um, you know, he, he wants to make it a, a hard race right from the start. I'm wildly underprepared, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gonna be pretty intensive from the start. We have two neutral laps and then we have 15 laps of two and a half kilometers. It's going to be pretty uh, intensive with every lap, there's uh, two U-turns. So that's going to hurt for the guys with the jet lag and, and just riding a, a bit last few days. And then uh, it's going to be good to open up. But our main focus is on tomorrow. Uh, I did this race three years ago and, and it was kind of like a, just like a 
like a circus, kind of like not a real race. Now everybody is taking it real seriously, which is like <laughs> totally the trend in cycling. Um, so it might be harder this time around, but the last time I remember it wasn't too bad. I found it very difficult coming back into road races. Um, it's very much business as usual. Just all the reasons I sort of wanted to get involved in the other stuff. Confirmed. <laughs> I keep on telling Lockie, especially after he won Utah, that stage in Utah, he's the, the Tony Hawk of alternative. He, he's, he's making it cool, he's pulling the 900, you know, like giving the sport a bigger presence. And I, I love that he's doing it. I wish I could do uh, some of the alternative races. Just by virtue of my calendar this year, I wasn't able to do them. You couldn't be more proud of him in the way that, you know, he's won alternative calendar races and he's really struggled in alternative calendar races and he's won on the road in World Tour races. I mean, he's done, you know, if, if you were like to say, like, who is the, the best all around bike rider in the world this year, not bike racer necessarily, but the best bike rider in the world this year, I mean, it has to be Lachlan Morton. I just came uh, to the end of my first year as a pro, well, almost. I've still got one race left, like 140k left of my first year. Um, it's been a pretty full-on year. I feel like I've gone through more stress in this year than I have in like my 21 years beforehand. But uh, it's a good stress. Uh, I've gone through a lot of change, setting up apartments and moving across overseas and getting, well, trying to learn how to race a bike in, in a proper world tour level. Jimmy is a lot like me in a lot of ways. He came into the World Tour even greener than I came into the World Tour. Uh, he wants it. You can just tell he, he really wants to have success. He's willing to learn. And for guys like that, even if they're uh, really green, I'm, I'm, I've got all the time in the world to kind of share information and, and try and give advice too. Because like you're down guys, like I was using track as my lead out. You know, like notice how that I was like Pro cycling gives you, as a rider, as an athlete, it gives you this sense that you're never really good enough, that you're always chasing something. And the dynamics of the peloton and the dynamics of the race are that, unless you're the person on the front, which is very rare to be the one person on the front out of 150 people, you are subject to the pace of, of somebody else. And you're constantly battling yourself to, f to fight, like to follow that wheel. And that's, that's all we do is we're just like, we're just following wheels. You can pepper some wins in there and that brings the vibe up. And that's like, I mean, winning, the bike, winning a bike race is one of the most amazing feelings in the world because you spend so much time just getting whipped, like getting your ass kicked. 100 meters to go, I just gave it everything I had and it was creeping up on him. And you know, I knew I was gonna get it because I just, I was just, I was just coming up on him, and it was, uh, you know, like I said, it's a beautiful thing. I, there's nothing better in the world than winning a bike race. So this is a really beautiful feeling. Mike is always very motivated. He knows he has the condition to do this, to finish this off well. I want to try and win. It's a cool race. I just like racing my bike, and I know when I get into race mode, I'm going to get in that tunnel vision mode where I want to win, and so hopefully I can try and win it. Mike is pretty incredible. He was racing to win bike races in January, and he can make it all the way through until October. Like, there's not many guys that can do that. Of the 2019 Japan Cup Cycle Rovers. Today we have a distance of 144.2 kilometers. That's 40 laps of the 10.3 kilometer circuit. 
It's going to be a really hard fought race, probably more so than most Japan Cups have been. I think it's a battle between Mike Woods, Boca Molema, and maybe you know, one or two other guys in there. But I mean, I got to go with that Mike is going to learn how to win a race on Sunday. Okay, guys, go to the front track and Jumbo is jumping. Come on, come on, we be aggressive, huh? It's been a big year. <laughs> So physically, I'm definitely a little bit tired. Take it easy, catch up on some sleep. What for next year? I'm actually really going to try and learn how to ride a mountain bike properly. Tell me. Jimmy's not, he's f***ing strong, you can tell. Like, but Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, he's f***ing good. Yeah. But he's going to get f***ing too, too much in his head and start trying to go pull for plenty. Does that f***ing eat him alive? I'm going to, I'm going to yeah, go yeah. to the front. He should rotate through easy. And then yeah. you gotta watch Chaconi and Caruso. I'm gonna go to the front and talk to him. I'm, I'm gonna come directly back. I encourage people within the, the sport and within the environment just to to tap out every once in a while, to disconnect, to like throw your power meter away <laughs> and just ride your bike, like put some flat pedals on your bike and just ride it around, like get some fat tires and just see how that feels because it feels nice and just ride, just ride your bicycle because we live in this like golden era of professional sports where you can make a living from being an athlete, which is like, that's only been a thing for like the last 20 years. To, to be able to make a living as a professional athlete, like you don't have, a, have to have a side job or whatever. Like, so just take it a little less seriously and just be grateful that you can do that and see like what you can do with your extra time instead of killing that time and like obsessing about what you have to do next. Take a step back, bro. <laughs> I need to talk to him and then I go back. Jimmy, you need to take it easy. You are very strong and you have to believe in yourself. I believe in you, the guys behind you also. All the big teams are here. So it's not sure who's gonna ride. What? Don't think about that. We're not gonna do that. Push. Yeah. Good. This team has always been a very likable team. You know, people ask me sort of, what's the goal of the team, and what you know, where do you want to go? Do you want to win 60, 70 races? We're more about winning with people that are compelling personalities and winning races that are meaningful for the broader cycling community. Um, and that's sort of the magic of the team as opposed to just sort of methodically and numbly just pounding out race victories. We're trying to make the cycling community as a whole happy. Road cycling just needs to make fun of itself a little bit more. The real world is, is huge and the the pro professional road cycling bubble is seems like it's very large, but it's super small. Lachlan, you can start riding when we start the climb. So that's about 500 meters before the finish. You can start riding and you can go really hard to make the gap smaller fast because then other people will come too. Okay. Yeah, what he cannot eat. He didn't eat? He can't. Why? His stomach. He, he could not eat. The only thing he could do is drink drinks. Yeah. Come on, man. Molomai is gonna follow you. Man. Come on, come on, Mike. He's going. He's going. More than 40 seconds. Can I pass or not? Can I go to my rider? Start sprinting just before the last.
last corner, 100, 160 meters before the finish. You just take the inside, and you're gonna win. Come on, buddy. They finished by now. Who won? Wait, did he win? No, second. Oh, How is that possible? No, come on. Oh, and Malka Molimer takes the 2009. What the f is Mike? told him it was 10k to go. But that's also a little bit Mike's fault. Oh, Mike. Mike lost the sprint, but I don't know if he really, I mean, probably lost it, but he didn't know it was the last lap. He thought it was one lap to go, so he didn't really sprint. Um, yeah, so. That's why he's a bit pissed. Yeah, that's why he's a bit upset, is that um, when, yeah, I mean, I don't know why you'd ask Molima, but when he asked Molima how far to go, Molima said, yeah, it's one more lap. It's a good lesson for him that, like, you know, it, your rivals aren't always going to be honest with you, so. You know, for many, many, many years, I've been saying one of the biggest things that cycling struggles with is that there is not a connection between recreational riders and professional riders, that that bridge has not been built. And, and it was one of those things that always sort of vexed me, but I, I you know, I didn't have the solution any better than anyone else did. Um, but, you know, this year, thanks to Rafa and thanks to EF deciding to, to take a little bit of an alternative view on things and, and be innovative, I think we've made the first steps to sort of building that bridge. Um, and that's, that's the key to the future of bike racing as a sport, is the bridge between people who ride bikes and people who race bikes, that they're, you know, they're seen as one community as opposed to two separate communities. I think that's something that people would say couldn't have been done a couple of years ago. The message in the end of this year is, is just, to be very simple about it, just well done. Um, that everyone, they rode together, they rode as a team, they executed on the fundamentals. Everyone always showed up fit. We were never having to chase anyone about training. We were never having to chase anyone about their nutrition. It was very much a very professional, motivated group of riders, a very professional, motivated staff behind the riders. Uh, and you, I mean, yeah, I think well done is just, those are the two words. say thank you to everybody that came out today. All the Japanese fans made me feel super loved and I tried to get as many bottles to as many people as possible. I spent the whole race off the back which I actually prefer. <laughs> Thanks to y'all.